Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Get a little quiet social distancing time myself this week. I guess we should start our weekly video forecast heading into this uh, April 23rd, 24th, and 25th weekend by starting off the same way as we have done for the last several weeks, and that's give you COVID-19 updates, any changes from last week's video forecast, and there are a couple. Now, the governors of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut got together on Saturday, came out with what they're calling a unified approach to boating and fishing on Saturday. That's what happened, one step forward, one step back, the way I see things written down. Now, the first thing that we do know, according to the governor's uh, brand new arrangement marinas and boat yards may stay open in new jersey for personal use so long as you practice strict social distancing in fact they've actually got sanitation or sanitization protocols written into that so keep that in mind that doesn't that means you, you really don't have that curbside service you can't go in uh into the uh into the marina uh, unless you've got an appointment you call ahead or unless you're invited in inside the marina office but you can get access to your boat if it's in the in the slip if you're ready to splash, call up the marina. Those marinas are able to operate. And now we've got that codified or at least written down so that we know it's true. What we already knew also was that chartered services were not allowed with no light apparently at the end of the tunnel at this point for our uh, charter boats and party boats. Now I do know there's some efforts pushing in the governor's office and there's some efforts uh, on a regional basis and also at the national level to get you guys uh, and get us back into fishing on the for hire boats. Uh, we just don't have any word on that. I know there's a couple of petitions going around as well. What we perhaps did not know that we did find out on Saturday, another step back, was that boat rentals, for whatever reason, are not allowed to operate either. So if you're looking to come from out of state or even if you're in state and you don't have a boat, uh, at this point, we don't have any boat rentals. Uh, again, uh, what I'm trying to learn from the state of New Jersey, I've got some messages in right now, is what about the state-run boat ramps? Because if Connecticut, for example, has 117 state-run boat launches that are operational right now. I'd like to find out about those New Jersey state-run sites that are closed. Think Forked River, Fortescue, maybe even Round Valley. Now you can launch or get splashed at a private owned marina, but I would like to see Governor Murphy perhaps take that unified approach that they were talking about on Saturday and join Connecticut and perhaps opening up those state parks and those facilities where we can get public launch. Heck, I'd love to see the state parks opened up, especially the angling. I look at Island Beach State Park. We're getting ready to start that spring run. So hopefully we can see some light at the end of the tunnel in the next couple of weeks or so. Just keep these tips in mind when you're out and about, uh, when you're heading out on the boat, immediate family members, of course, um, but when you're out there, just really keep these social distancing uh, things in mind. If you do find a boat ramp that's, that's accessible, don't have too many people standing around the boat ramp. Don't have too many people outside. Make sure you've got your covering. You should have these, these buffs all the time around your neck. We don't want to get in a situation where somebody looks at this and says, there's too many people there. We got to shut it down. Of course, finding an open stretch of beach uh, or jetty to fish while also social distancing, it's, it's a little bit tough as well now with all these municipalities closing down beaches, boardwalks, the state and county park closures. But uh, if you keep your mind, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, hunt and pack. Again, I uh, found a nice little spot where I haven't seen anybody in a little while just by using Google Earth and driving around and trying to find one of those locations. But I hope those parks along the front beaches open soon because we do have some new arrivals to talk about and I'm pretty excited about it. On Tuesday, Grumpy's in Seaside, an apparent shore report of a bluefish that was reported by BPM Fishing New Jersey. So they are here. In fact, Monday, where I live in, in, in Northern Ocean County, I was out, the air was really thick, a light easterly wind. I could swear it smelled like bluefish. So uh, I'm hearing more of that. We talked about one and uh, a couple of them reported in Great Bay. We've heard of some tails nipped off of plastics. Uh, spoke to Chuck Manny this week, who's been live lining stripers up on the rare, and he said, yeah, I've lost a couple of bunkers to bluefish. So they're definitely around the area at this point. You know what else is here? Found out this week, weak fish have arrived. And it seems to me like maybe four out of the last five three out of the last five years the first weak fish i got reported of the season came from the same crew the crudelli boys they took out dad's boat jimmy crudelli his brother jumped on dad's boat for a little social distancing and found those weak fish i would have guessed somewhere behind or around sea isle city 
but you know what it's like with the weak fish sharpies they're keeping it tight but those weak fish are in as well i've also heard of a few blowfish caught in the last couple of weeks we had that confirmed this week from the folks at fisherman's headquarters which shared this photo of a nice sea squab taken those are some of the new arrivals but we're also getting more arrivals of those big stripers the big news this week is yet another very large fish caught along the delaware river you know, that tuesday weather blast that we had i hope you made it through all right safe and sound and no property damage but during that blow um, scott pakin let me know that he sneaked out along the delaware river was fighting 30 35 mile an hour winds uh, using fresh bunker chunks on an inline 70 circle caught and released this big fish that he estimates weighs at least 50 pounds scott says he's fished 28 out of the last 30 days and has caught some nice nice stripers along that stretch of the delaware but this was his dream fish he was stoked to catch it equally stoked to see it swim away nice and strong nice job scott again some big fish around up on the raritan as well we've been talking about that for weeks uh, and it's not just the boat guys some of the pluggers are finding some nice spots uh, to get access to socially distant fish and catch a couple of big fish as well skyler uh, wilson he let me know he was on on them under cover of dark i've had a couple of buddies telling me they're getting up there uh, in some spots along the raritan or off the raritan where they're finding good plug and action on striped bass under cover of dark so that's good good news as well now also in south central new jersey in the back chris madison my buddy and uh, he's in the, in the atlantic city area he always tells me you're always talking about those cows in the delaware and the rare well we're getting some good action at night as well upper slot limit fish he tells me he's been fishing uh, the night tides uh in back along those sod banks throwing some of those northeast jig paddles and smaller mag darters as well so that's a good sign those fish are spreading out in those back bays as well uh, speaking of back bays you might have seen this it was posted i, I posted it uh, last week shared it shared it on Facebook but the COs are on the prowl looking for pirates poachers and general scoff laws and that's a good thing a March 30th boat uh, bust it led to the early morning apprehension of two guys in possession two guys in possession of 66 undersized Atlantic striped bass the charges for this over the limit violations and undersized fish it carries a $100 per person per violation uh, fine so you add them all up $13,000 fine levied at these two guys. Now they've got to go through court. We don't have their names yet, uh, but we're going to be following this along. COs will have, um, uh, they, they confiscated the gear and they're seeking a permanent forfeiture due to the severity of the violation. Some people ask what happened to those fish. They donated them uh, to the Atlantic City Food Mission. On the freshwater side, all those full deposits of trout uh, that have happened this year, there's no real in-season stocking. They just dumped a bunch of them and they're still holding on to some at, uh, up at peak quest but a lot of good catches throughout the state of new jersey hoping to find out myself right now we checked in with uh, ryan morse he's down in cape may county he was out working ponder lodge pod or ponder lodge pond that's a hard one for me to say and found some rainbows in there as well released that fish of course the social distancing aspect of the fresh water is probably one of the things that is kind of exciting me as well and a lot of people because uh, you can find yourself a couple of locations in the sweet water and not be able to bump into too many people out here as well also with these stay-at-home orders many folks like Paul Gantz uh, who might prefer the salt this time of year staying closer to home out in the Philadelphia area hitting local spots like the Schuylkill River for some good catches of fish as well for more on the western front let's check in with my buddy George the Pocono Outdoors guy well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, still out trying to be responsible with all this virus stuff still going around. I thought I'd take some time, get the boat ready to splash in the water. You know, we'll be out trolling for those stripers before too long. But the weather has been absolutely crazy. This past weekend, we even had snow here in the Poconos, so it really has things upside down. Gave the fish a bit of a lockjaw. But you know what? When some fish have lockjaw, that's an opportunity for some other guys. And you know who they are. The trout guys. Yeah, they're always out that water gets cold them guys get on a bite our good friend Eric Goodstall was out got himself into a 16 and 3 quarter inch brook trout can you imagine that that's a huge brookie and also a beautiful 19 inch rainbow and he got them on the fly in some of the local streams here in Pennsylvania also he got into this really nice crappie on a fly too which is a great little catch love the crappie fish and guys get out you got to get on some of them good friend Justin Lerner was out and got his PB brown trout over in New Jersey again 
again, throwing those plugs and jerk baits and ended up getting some real nice browns. Justin's been on a streak this year. He really knows how to get on them. Now also, good friend Ryan Scott was out uh, in the Lehigh River and he managed to get on a couple of really nice brown trout as well. So, uh, and he got them on some, some plugs too. So again, fishing's been really good here, uh, especially in that cold weather, those, those trout get active. Always a bite to get on. You just gotta know what to look for. Also, on the Delaware, the guys are out uh, starting to catch shad again. You know, that high water and rain from uh, days ago really had things screwed up, but as the water slows down, gets a little clearer, they're going to start to pick up more shad. Guys are getting stripers. Uh, hopefully as the weekend gets here, we'll be able to get on a few more fish. So guys get out, stay responsible, stay safe. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. As George mentioned, staying safe, following the guidelines, keeping those masks on whenever you're around people. Good advice, sound advice. And it's advice that you'll hear from the local tackle shops as well. Of course, we've talked about it, doing curbside assistance. You phone in those orders, do the curbside, maybe ring the bell, they'll bring stuff out. But these folks, we gotta take care of them as well and they've gotta stay safe as well. So keep those social distancing uh, aspects uh, uh, together when you're there. And I mentioned Abseekin Bay because Jacob here, he was masked when he stopped in, showed off the this nice four pound tog outside of Dave's shop the other day. He was out uh, with his family, caught it on a magic tail tog jig, fishing with family again. Good time of year to be doing that, and especially under these conditions. Keep in mind, you have to take advantage of that tog fishing right now. Uh, on the sod banks, the jetties, uh, along the bridges, we have tog in New Jersey until the end of the month, the four fish bag limit. But come May 1st, we shut down tog real convenient with the COVID-19 guidelines. Our weekly edition is posted uh, over at thefisherman.com. You subscribers, you're not getting that print edition right now, but you're still getting your edition. It's online, you gotta log in to get it. Uh, we're working on the May edition right now. We'll go to print and be in newsstands and marinas. And of course, to you subscribers in the next week and a half or so. But again, if you're a subscriber, you get access online to our weekly edition with how to, all those reports from the weekend, uh, news and information that you need as well. Finally. It was 18 years ago this Sunday when John Christian was fishing from shore along the Great Egg Harbor River in Mays Landing when he caught the New Jersey state record freshwater striped bass of 51 pounds. Now I know striped bass is anadromous, so that was probably in the salt before it headed up the Great Egg uh, to do its spawning, but it was this Sunday, uh, 18 years ago, that he caught that fish. You know, uh, we are in the middle of spawning season uh, for striped bass. There's an incredible video uh, that I just saw, uh, was shared by Teacher's Pet Fishing out of Solomon, Maryland. The video was uh, by Keith Lockwood. It was along the Chop Tank River, right off the Chesapeake, edited by Travis Long. If you see this link up here, uh, there's a little link. I'll share that video for you right here. Uh, amazing thing to watch these spawning stripers. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to be blessed to witness this. I've talked to friends who have seen the spawning activity of striped bass. It's pretty extraordinary, but you'll, you'll find it. Some of the areas off the Delaware, off the Raritan, of course, the Great Egg and the Mullica as well. So keep that in mind that a lot of these big stripers, again, uh, they're in the area, they're sagging bellies, they are in here to spawn. So you get those big fish, make sure you take care, let them go, let them swim strong. Be socially distant, but don't be a shut-in. You can get out, you can do it safely, you can do it with your immediate family, but you can enjoy some of the fishing that we've got going on right now in the region. So until next week, catch them up, stay safe, and I'll see you again right here at thefisherman.com.